Mr. Rashid Shah, other distinguished colleagues uh, on the dais and friends. Thank you very much uh, for having put this uh, post-budget interaction together. While uh, budget making itself uh, is a complicated exercise, I think commenting on it is very simple. <laughs> because uh, everybody really expects you to spend a lot more because the economy needs uh, a boost. They expect you to spend more and tax less, yet maintain fiscal prudence. And of course, there are sections which are uh, always thinking in terms of entitlements. And therefore, you have to keep all these broad interests in mind while budget making. But this year's uh, budget was prepared in the environment when uh, after about uh, a couple of years of slow growth in the global economy, one could see the global economy moving up. And that, of course, also had its own uh, impact on domestic demand. It showed uh, improvement in the exports in the last uh, few months. The indications of this uh, were correspondingly available within the country also. All the quick indicators which were coming were showing uh, a positive trend as far as the economy is concerned. And I think there was a third important factor that in the last uh, two years in particular, We'd gone through a phase of uh, very difficult and challenging reforms being, uh, the decisions being taken and the reforms actually being implemented. And if cumulatively you analyze this post-reform period, global economy moving up, domestic indicators looking better, This really is a phase where we ought to have consolidated the benefits of all this. And while consolidating the benefits of all this, one had to bear in mind the conventional sectors uh, which have done well. And many of them do well even in spite of the government. They do well in, independent of the government, the services sector, for instance. And of course, uh, there are sectors uh, where we've lagged behind conventionally, but now we are uh, on track. And I think the way we are moving, uh, with almost every year, we'll see improvement. Infrastructure is one such sector uh, uh, where we've, uh, in several areas, uh, uh, hastened the pace. And it's visible in some areas. It's now lesser visible, but beginning to happen in the other areas. And therefore, you had to continue to keep on and expanding on the spending in those areas. Agriculture was one sector which did need support. And I think uh, over the next few years, governments at the center and the states will have to really concentrate on this particular area because that is where uh, 
the glaring uh, income inequalities are, inequalities in terms of quality of life are. That is where uh, potential for further growth at a better, higher pace in GDP, the potential really lies. And therefore, both in terms of rural infrastructure, and rural incomes are the areas which needed a spending. And uh, that was one of the sectors, therefore, which was carefully chosen in this area. Education, of course, is extremely important. Uh, so is healthcare. We've taken in the matter of healthcare in the past at the level of the central and the state government several baby steps. And therefore, you needed a big step in that movement. And I think uh, the health schemes that were announced uh, is a very ambitious one. And now in the next couple of months, uh, expeditiously, we have to work towards uh, putting the loose ends together and come, emerging out with the implementable idea behind the health scheme. You mentioned uh, the corporate income tax. Uh, you see, I had made an announcement that I'll uh, bring the rate down to 25% because uh, we are conscious of the both the global competitive environment and what other countries have been doing. And we also realized that uh, Indian companies need to have an investable surplus. And therefore, it's necessary to lower that rate. But I had, if you remember, categorically mentioned that this would be accompanied by phasing out the exemptions. Obviously, in the exemptions, uh, there is a challenge that each exemption has a sunset date. And uh, this country having uh, gone through the convulsions of the Vodafone experience, uh, now we are all very skeptical about any retrospective uh, actions. And therefore, if you phase out the exemptions ahead of the sunset clause, you really are accused of doing something which has a retrospective effect because people have set up companies uh, on the basis of businesses, on the basis of those exemptions. So it's not an easy deal that you waive, you, you, you write off those exemptions in advance. So we'll allow those exemptions to die their natural death as the sunset clause comes in. And probably then the potential of the budget itself to absorb uh, the loss of revenue would be much higher. Now, even without that benefit having taken place, since I had to walk the talk, it was 50 crores last year, it's uh, 250 crores this year. So the, we, we, we've graded up uh, in terms of making it 25%. And I do understand from the figures of the income tax department uh, that the 7,000 companies which are now left out of the 25% category, in fact, on an average, are paying between only 22 to 23% uh, uh, with the benefit of the exemptions. So once the exemptions uh, 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 phase out, uh, probably the opportunity, at, at the moment, no great prejudice is caused to them. So once the exemptions phase themselves out, uh, 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 our potential to move further 
could possibly increase. And this was also one of the reasons uh, why I was particular about, uh, the, despite the changes in the long-term capital gains, taxation, to make sure that there is no retrospective impact and people who've invested in the past, at least till the moment of the announcement, get the benefit of whatever profits they've earned till that moment. And that's why all existing uh, profits uh, earned were grandfathered by, uh, as a part of the changes itself. I think we've made a considerable headway as far as tax collection is con concerned. Uh, it's a combination of three factors. Uh, there have been um, on direct tax particularly strong actions which have been taken. That's left its toll. We've nudged the taxpayers, more and more people, to come into the net by giving them uh, concession after concession every year, lowering rates, rationalizing taxes. That nudging seems to have helped. The impact of demonetization clearly has been that the anonymity of the cash disappeared the moment it was de deposited into the banks. And therefore, the identified owner of the cash now had to account for it. So you had more returns and more money being uh, declared. The GST direct tax relationship is a very curious one. Because of the GST, there is a direct impact on the income tax side also, because what is uh, the volume of the business gets known and therefore it has its impact on the direct side. But the rationalizing of the GST tariffs also increase the profitability of some companies. And therefore, as the rationalization took place in that quarter, uh, the corporate tax which was lagging behind suddenly moved up. So if, if, if the companies uh, benefited from the GST rationalization, it also impacted their uh, 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 ability, uh, their profits, and therefore the direct taxes have gone up. And that's why we are running ahead of the direct taxation targets. As far as the indirect taxation is concerned, I think uh, the GST broadly has settled down. Uh, almost in every meeting now, we are able to rationalize the tariffs. Uh, and this process will continue. Uh, this process will continue. It will continue in terms of uh, 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 within the structure, the tariffs being rationalized, the structures itself being rationalized as the collections go up. But so far, what you have is a voluntarily declared GST with one check and safeguard, that is the input tax credit, ensures that more people declare. The taxpayer base in the indirect tax itself has widened. So from 64 lakhs, we already crossed a crore of people who registered themselves. And I think slowly as uh, the software system also matures, and uh, the two, three anti-evasion measures uh, uh, that uh, are possible are put in place, uh, uh, the compliance levels in GST will then automatically improve. Therefore, from a voluntary declaration under GST which are currently taking place, with those anti-evasion measures in place, I think uh, the collections will improve. And that is what will probably uh, improve upon the collections uh, and therefore, meeting, uh, sticking to the fiscal deficit targets in the coming year uh, 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 would be much easier than what it was in the current year. Current year was uh, uh, several uh, challenges which joined together. Uh, the non-tax revenues in particular 
had a setback. They had a setback on the spectrum of auctions. They had a setback in terms of, uh, in the earlier months, the public sector div dividends were a little low. The RBI dividend was a little low. And therefore, you had a series of uh, challenges. So we covered that up with a higher disinvestment uh, itself. It covered it up practically, uh, 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 significantly. But I think uh, one miss which we couldn't cover up was that the accounting system changed. In the old regime of central excise, VAT, and um, service tax, you would get paid uh, the tax in the month when the liability accrued, when the transactions took place. The GST, you get paid only the next month by the 20th of the next month. So for the current financial year, the March GST will only come in April. So the present current year, when people comment on the so-called fiscal slippage, conveniently overlook the fact that it is 12 months of expenditure and only 11 months of GST. Because this was the transformational year. Next year, of course, the cycle will be completed and it will be a 12-month GST. And that itself meant that the revenue receipts for one month were less. And therefore, in an 11-month uh, revenue, uh, to meet the fiscal targets uh, uh, for a 12-month expenditure itself uh, is difficult, particularly when you had a shortfall on the non-tax revenues itself, part of which we were trying to cover up through uh, other means, as I suggested. And I do believe that... Uh, uh, this 0.3 percent slippage, uh, if you translate uh, uh, that missing 36,000 crore revenue of the 12th month, that accounts for a large part of, or at least some significant part of this 0.3 percent uh, in this year itself. So, so a large part of this uh, slippage is really statistical in character uh, uh, because of this absence of one month. Uh, and I think next year with the cycle completed and with uh, hopefully uh, 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 a tax buoyancy which will be higher, it, uh, it's already uh, reached a reasonably high level and uh, it would be simpler than this year to, to probably meet those targets itself. Of course, there are uh, several segments which want uh, relief, but the capacity of the budget itself uh, 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 as to how much uh, relief you can give itself uh, is inherently limited because of uh, these several constraints. Uh, I do hope that uh, this year growth or higher growth is back and uh, hopefully we can uh, look towards the next couple of years uh, uh, as a period where uh, post those structural reforms, I think we start reaping in a much greater benefit as far as the economy is concerned. Thank you. So over to you, Sundar.